Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how to do some really neat stuff in our studio. We're going to show you how to do different graphs, but not just doing them separately. We're going to do them together so that down here in this area where we have the packages down here in plots, you're going to see I'm going to fit more than one graph together. So what I've already done, I've, as you can see up here in my global environment, my data, you can see I have four different data sets. I'm going to work with this one, test data three. What this is, is this is the bike share data set from the University of California, Irving. Uh, it's got bike rental data for two years, 2011 and 2012. And uh, it's got the sales, rentals, totals, all that stuff. So I've loaded in. Here's the uh, code if you want to see exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, so we've got the read Excel library in here so I can read Excel sheets. Uh, I've got test data three. That's where this read Excel X xlsx gets written into and here's the actual uh how it works this is the actual code to load that in um then what i've got down here i'm not touching this test data four thing i'll well just leave that out we don't need that right there uh, or we can just take that and comment that out actually let's just do that and i'm not using this filter here either but if you look right here uh down here where it says library. So what we're doing is we're loading in this library. We already loaded, loaded in the uh, read Excel. I can show you that right here. You just do this, control and enter. Then we do this one, same thing, control and enter. Now what I want to do is I want to bring this back over here and I'll show you these two, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing right here. So now what we've done is I'm going to create, so it's not just one graph by itself. I can change with this, uh, this comment code right here, I can actually change this to one comma two, which would mean two graphs in one page. I could, right now I've got two rows of three. That's what this basically is right here. So watch what I'm gonna do, it's really cool. Uh, we'll take and run this. Now, I've got some scatter plots, some box plots, um, and some uh, polygon plots. So let's do this. Watch. And this is how you can quickly go and take basically any data set and get some distribution data, some graphical data, and uh, dispersion data and just quickly see if there's some patterns or something. And I'm using primarily two, I believe there's just two uh, fields, temp and wind speed in here. But I could use count. Uh, actually, I've got count here too. It's right here. Uh, under this one, there's count. These are all data frames. So what I've done is I've loaded this data set into this data frame test data three, and then I'm using that. And I'll show you the different uh, pieces here. But what's really neat, okay, I've already run the pair code. And so if I just run this one right here, let's just see what that first one does. Watch. Okay, that gives you this. But see how small it is? That's because using this right here, I've divided it up into six containers. Right, so if I made that instead, one, let's do this, right? And let's run that and the first scatter line, okay? So I'll hit that control and enter again. See how it gets much bigger? Now I'm just going with three across. I could make this two if I wanted to right here. And let's do the exact same thing. And now I'm going to have a container for two. Watch. Hold on, did we hit the right button? Hold on, one and two. Let's try it again here. Here we go. There we go. I see how it automatically, when you hit enter, it divvies up. So now it's got space for two. So if I wanted to, I could have two. I could put, uh, let's put this like this. Let's take that and take the second one. All right, so we got two plots. Boom, boom. And they both fit. If I didn't have this in here and I just ran them by themselves, I would have one big plot, and that's it. I wouldn't have room for anything else. Now, what's kind of neat, these first two are scatter plots. So they show a breakdown of wind speed and temperature. So one of these is wind speed right here, and this one is daily rentals. So the second one is actually sales. CNT is the count of daily rentals or sales and against temperature. This one's sales against temperature. You see it right there and right there. And this one is sales against wind speed. So you could see with this distribution scatter plot, it's also got a little line in there. It's pretty heavy in there. But you can see that it's not a straight line. It actually goes this way and then goes this way. And this one starts somewhere right here and then goes this way. Okay. 
So you can see that the wind speed, as the wind speed gets higher, the uh, rentals drop off. As the wind speed gets lower, the rentals drop off. There's a sweet spot right here of rentals. Same thing with temperature. As the temperature gets below, this actually ends up being like 20 degrees, and this ends up being like miles per hour. So as this gets below 20 degrees, maybe 15 degrees, not many people are buying or renting. And as it gets above 80 degrees, not many people are renting or buying. So that's the sweet spot there and the sweet spot there. That's why you would want to use these scatter plots. Now, if I go and make this back to what it was, all right, two rows of three containers. That's basically what this does. So let's do that. And then let's throw in these box plots. I'm not going to put everything in, but let's put those guys in. And just hit Control and Enter. Now look, we have four graphs. We've got room for two more, and I've got those coming up. But right here, you've got the test data. Now, that's not exactly the clearest thing yet. I'll, we're going to fix it in a little bit. But you also have these two box plots, which will tell you if there's outer liars. Outer liars means you'll see things up above or below and where the mean and how thick this area is as to the distribution. So temperature is pretty good. Wind speed, we do have some outer liars up here, as you can see. Not a lot, but we do have some. So the vast majority of it's down here, and it's pretty good. You might want to exclude some of your outer liars in your uh, analysis. Now that we have those two, let's incorporate the bottom two also. So let's take this and go all the way to the bottom here. And this has some colored plots too, so let's hit Enter. And there we go. So now see how neat this is? You now actually have six plots, and I can make them bigger so that they're easier to read. So yeah, when they're in that small area, they're kind of hard to see into. But we can make them as big as we want. And in here you can see now I have the scatter plots for uh, rentals and wind speed. And I have temperature and wind speed here in these box plots. And then I also have density plots here, which tells me the frequency for temperature and wind speed and the breakdown of these and I've colored them with red. So let me show you how we did this, but you can see here the breakdown. So for wind speed, you, know, you can see that the vast majority of the action here goes on at around uh, this area. And you can see it breaks down, as we said earlier, when the wind uh, dies down at the lower ends and at the higher ends. Same thing with this one over here. Um, it's a little different, is that the temperature we saw, there's you know a sweet spot. There's actually a spot in the middle where there's a drop off, um, which is something, you know, if you were doing data analysis on this, you might want to investigate that and see what is that drop off. Is there some holiday seasons in there? Is there uh, some seasonality in there? And then you can see here is the temperature, and it may not be because it's temperature, but it could be because temperature, you know, is lower obviously in the winter and higher in the, in the uh, summer. But you have some drop off here. And then you have a major drop off here once it gets below 20 degrees, as we said, and once it gets above 80 degrees, as we said. So these are very helpful in figuring out for this data when the prime rental season is and maybe what areas that we could uh, find some X we need to delve into a little bit more like this here. This should be higher here, but maybe there's some reason why it's lower here. We're not sure. That's something we could investigate further with. That's what you do with this. This is data analysis and data wrangling. We didn't really wrangle the data much here, but what we're looking for is patterns and we can see, you know, some outer liars I'm going to clean up. Um, we can see the pattern here, and then this is backed up. So the scatter plots give you an original quick overview, and then the density plots show you exactly how that data breaks down uh, in a better representation. And then they even show you, so like here, see this little area where it dips right here? Well, guess what? That's right here. So see how there's a lot of darkness right here and here, but there's not any really right here? This is that area right there. And maybe we need to focus in on that area. If I, if I were that company, I wanted to increase my rentals. That's prime real estate that we're not doing well with. Not sure why, but that's something they should look into. So let me take this back this way, and we'll make them small again. And the reason being is I want to show you the code that I use to do this. So if I take this all the way over here, okay, let me show you this code. So this is the code that we use right here. Library E1071. Um, before this, we used the Read Excel uh, library. Then you've got these rows right here: scatter smooth, 
scatter smooth box plot they're all right here um, let me see if I can show you the whole code here in a better way let's see let's take this I don't need this I just we don't need the comments here and let's see let me make it so that this wraps around so we got that the plot maybe what we'll do is bring this around here and bring that back so you can see that and what I'll do is I'll leave it like that let's get rid of that and we'll do the same thing down here with this one bring that one down and bring that back to here get rid of that so now you can see the code exactly that I just used. So you can see here the scatter plot code, the scatter for both of them, uh, the box plot code, the plot code, and how I colored in the uh, polygon inside it. So, you know, without this polygon coding color code here, it just becomes like an ugly little line. The color code, this fills the interior of it so when you saw that line and it was nice and red that's what you were seeing there um, so that's how that works so I showed you today how to do some really cool graphs we made uh, uh, six graphs in one um, you know it's very simple to do and when you're done you filled it in correctly for whatever data you want you know you just hit this and it'll show when you're done now why is it not showing all of a sudden? Uh, you're probably missing some piece of it. Oh, you know what? Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but this this works. You saw it earlier, so I just have to reset what I was doing there. Um, regardless, this is the code for it. It's really easy to use. Splits it up into uh, six different uh, graphs or three graphs or two graphs or whatever it is you want. Um, really neat to use and uh, works very well uh, for all kinds of stuff. So again, um, give it a try. There it is right there. I must have missed a piece of code at the end. You understand in our studio in R, it's very picky. So if I, must, I might have missed an end piece there or something. But here it is again. Here's the code. And uh, uh, just make sure you highlight the whole piece that you're doing. You know, If you're doing one little piece, um, for instance, if I was just doing this plot here, I would just highlight this. Uh, it's pretty uh, easy to do. Um, but this is the code, again, I use to make six different uh, graphs, and then you can you know, bring it back and make it bigger so that they're easier to see what you're working with and uh, delve into it a little deeper and see if there's hint some hidden meanings in your, uh, uh, your data. So, again, this is the uh, bike share, bike rental data set. It uh, involves years 2011-2012 data from the University of California at Irving. Uh, their data science department is free to use it's on the Internet. And you can do this with any data set. Just, you know, pick a couple of uh, fields that you want to work with. Uh, you know, look at some correlations, see if there's some correlations. I already did that beforehand with this. Um and uh, then take it and, or even if you don't know if there's correlations, take it and look at it. Look at the data. See if you can see anything useful in it. If it's just a straight line or a bunch of straight weird lines and doesn't mean anything, use different fields. And try your different fields, mash them up together and see what you can get out of it. This one, you can clearly see the hidden meaning in it. And everything in the scatter plots is backed up in the density plots. What's neat is by using multiple different graphs, sometimes you'll highlight things you don't regularly see. So when I'm looking at this one, I don't see there's a hole right here. It's kind of hard to see. You just see this pattern going through and this little line going through here. But there's actually a hole there. And now once I know that it's there from the density plot, I can go back here and say, yeah, there's an area of opportunity right here where we're not renting enough. We're not selling enough or this customer is not doing that. Uh, same thing with wind speed. I can see the areas that are really popular right here. And then it starts to lay off uh, or level off after you know, 25, 30 miles an hour. People don't like high winds apparently and they don't like low winds apparently so some pretty interesting data here and a pretty interesting way to look at things quickly and what's neat with this is it's like a model that you know I can go and take any data set and just stick it in this test data 3 uh, load it in as I just showed you above and uh, off an Excel sheet or whatever and if I don't know what's in that I can use this str 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 str
test data three right here. I can use this, run that, and that'll actually give me the uh, fields and field information. So if I actually took this right here, let's do that, and do that. Now you can't see it because it's all hidden down below here, but let's bring that up. And that tells you every field in there, or every column, and uh, some sample data of it right here, and then what is that field. So I can sit here, what I was using was temp, and I believe I was using uh, wind speed, which is right here, and count, which is the end one right there. So it shows you some of the data that's in there and how it's represented. And you can play with it and figure it out and uh, try with different data sets. I encourage you to do that. And this works great in data analysis in the early phases to figure out, you know, where's the hidden meanings? Where are the challenges? Where are the opportunities? Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, please subscribe and like. And uh, check out the other videos on my channel. I've got a lot of great videos like this that show you data analysis, data science, uh, looking into things with Excel and uh, data wrangling and all kinds of uh, great stuff for data analysts, data scientists, uh, people that want to be doing data analysis, whatever it is you're looking at. Uh, you just want to look at a data set and learn something, get some new ideas, some new insights from it. This is a great way to start. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.